And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, episode Ooh, 66. The Halloween special. Presented by Comics Remix. Ah. <laughs> As always, I'm your host, Big B Brian Adams, and joining me... No, no, no. You are not Big B Brian Adams no. today. No. No? You are, um, what's, what's a ghoulish name that starts with a B? Like, a, an adjective. I don't know. Me neither. Bloody. Yeah, okay. You are the bloody Brian Adams. Whoa, uh, 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 uh. And I'm apparently the Count from Sesame Count, Street. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Count Junior Ruiz. Oh, man. So this is our Halloween special. Um, you know. No. Celebrating Halloween. Ooh. We want to do something special, so there's not really any comic book news this week. But, uh, you know, uh, horror... Horror. Horror, not yeah. horse or horror. Horror and aspects of um, monsters, man, whatever the hell you want to <laughs> throw in there. Have a big part of, you know, our, do that our hobby. The episode, yeah, hey, whatever, man. Um, you know, EC, uh, the classic horror comics, mm-hmm. have been a part of comic books since I believe the 40s. So, I mean, it's, you know, horror is a big part of the genre. Oh, yeah. That is comic books. So what I have for you today <clears throat> in uh, tribute to Halloween is 13 must-read horror or horror-inspired comic books. <laughs> you really like that, don't you? They're going to be like, all right, I'm done listening to this. Um, I don't really, there's no order based here. I didn't want to rank them. Right. It's just 13 suggested comics to read for mm-hmm. Halloween. Um, I'm going to start it off with uh, Eye Zombie. Kind of a given. Um, you know, it's uh, obviously was good enough a comic book that it, pop- that it spawned a popular TV show. I mean, it is in the second season. See, I, I seriously didn't think you were going to start off with that one. Really? Yeah. But, okay. Cool. Well, it's, it's, for me, it's the, if, if, I, if I had to have ranked, it would have been like the, the last one. Right. Um, and, it, and it's going from, uh, you know, I attempted to get feedback on this and got very little. So thanks guys. Yeah. Thanks. I had to call this from my own personal reading experience, the majority of it, which is not, you know, it's fine, which is, you know, cause it's hard to recommend a comic book that you haven't read. Yeah. And, okay. uh, I zombie, honestly, a good book. I liked it better than the show. Um, you know, you've got a brain eating girl that, uh, helps people that have moved on well, it helps people that have passed to move on. Mm-hmm. Like if someone died traumatically and there was something weird that happened and it was they had unfinished business in the mortal realm, after eating their brains, their ghost would show up and then she would help them put themselves to rest. Um, it was a really good book. You know, you had a wear terrier. Um, it was a guy that turned into, obviously, a dog, a terrier. Right. Um, a, he, her best friend's a ghost. There was also a mummy. Ooh. Um, there were vampires, there were monster hunters, you know. You should so, definitely put some Halloween music playing in the background yeah. this whole episode. So there's definitely like a, you know, it's got the vibe of Halloween. Um, it's good stuff. If you haven't read it, pick it up. It's obviously on trades. You could probably get it at your local library, honestly. Uh, for That's actually a good point for people that are into comic books. You know, if you don't really have money to afford reading on a regular basis or you're just a trade person... Library, great source for trade paperbacks. Yeah, it's funny because we're talking Halloween stuff, spooky stuff, all mm-hmm. this stuff. I'm looking at your Halloween decorations, and they all have smiles on them. Yeah. Kind of hard to be scared. Yeah, I know. Not it's... that I want to be scared because I'm a chicken, but. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, it, it's become the happy holiday. But you know what I have noticed? Your Justice League that you have up in your curio case there, yeah. they've been posed differently for a more dramatic effect. That's pretty cool. Except Cyborg, nobody yeah. likes Cyborg. So you got to you had to you had to give yourself some props for going up and yeah, playing and with disturbing toys. my toys, eh, and whatever. possibly breaking one of the little lightning bolts on Flash's head. Possibly, I don't. Yeah, whatever. Nice. I saved your 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 hide enough times that that'll slide. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Don't worry if 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 it, if it if it falls off, I'll be calling you up to find me another one. I don't care if it's open as long as it. It's in good shape. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'll buy you some Elmer's glue. Moving on. 
uh, another. Mister, I'm about to put those back in the box anyway. <laughs> another great comic book that was actually was the some of the minimal, almost non-existent feedback that I received was uh, Hellboy. Hellboy was such a good. Uh... You know, Hellboy is kind of an obvious thing. Uh, spawned two movies, hopefully a third. I mean, that's an obvious given to the two horror animated features. You no, know, yeah, it's. I mean, it's Hellboy. Yeah. Does it need any more explaining? Um, next, I've got Severed. I haven't really read Severed. I know I you have. So I'm going to leave you to give us a little... Um, Severed was just... Why we should read Severed. See, for me being... I am not a fan of the horror genre. Mm-hmm. The only horror movie I can watch and enjoy is Child's Play. For, I, I hate Nightmare on Elm Street. Anybody who knows me knows that I've hate, I've grew, I grew up hating it with a passion. Um, Jason and Michael Myers really did nothing for me, but, uh, Candyman scared the crap out of me. Um, I'm more of a, um, I, I'm more of what, what you know is there, but you can't see. Mm -hmm. Scares me a lot more. Right. Like, well, and then The Exorcist, that movie made me, anyway, um, but just stuff like that. Like, I, I avoid haunted houses, much to my girlfriend's sugar, she hates it, you know, because she doesn't go, because I don't go. Um... But Severed is one of those stories where the evil is there, but it's more in the narrative than it is in the actual artwork. Mm-hmm. But when it does appear in the artwork, it's just like, wow, this it, it adds to the creepiness that you're already reading. Um, it's a story where um, it's about, um, I, would, I don't remember if he was a demon or not, but it was just, we'll call him a man. This man who ate children. Um, and it's about this... The, the story is... I think it's six issues, six, seven issues... About this boy who he's chosen to be his next meal... But the story follows his kid and what makes him special. I just... I thought it was good. I'm not even going to give away the ending... Because the ending pretty much blew me away. Because um, I didn't expect the ending to go the way it did. But... Uh, Pick up Severed from Image. It was written by Scott Snyder. Yeah, Scott um, Snyder. It's one of the reasons I read it was because when I heard of Severed, I believe issue six, or right around the end of the series, was just coming out, and as well as his new 52 Batman stuff had just started. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, everybody's hyping Scott Snyder. I right. want to see what he does on the indies. And I picked up Severed and I read it and I recommended it. And my mom lo- read it and she loved it. Nice. You know, um, it was. It's just. That's one always good when you can get your mom to read something. You know. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, severed image comics. Check it out. And then uh, tales, yeah. tales from the crypt. Oh, like man. this is classic, classic comic. Classic comic. Again, something that spawned a, a a TV show or well, an HBO show. On it. I don't know if that ever ran on regular TV. I believe it did. Did it? Um, just great, man. Like horror at its best. You know, it was obviously an anthology for people that don't know. Again, it goes back to EC. I believe Tales from the Crypt was one of those EC titles. Um, gotta love the Crypt Keeper. You know, that, that's horror at its best, man. Um, that's a book that I would really like to see return. But, I mean, there's so many... I'm sure that you could find a ton of, of reprints of old uh, Tales from the Crypt. You know, it's not uh, not anything that's an ongoing story. Just long little one-shot stories, which I really appreciate that. But yeah. classic... Classic horror comics at its finest, man. At its finest. Um, something a little more current, but not really more current because it's kind of found its way to the graveyard. Um, Gotham no, by Midnight. No pun intended. Yeah, no pun intended. I I can't. I know I've I've uh, I've said before on the show that you know I've recommended the title. Um, it's really good. You know, you've got um, it's pretty much oh my god, I, Jim Corrigan, the Spectre. And a team of Gotham City police detectives and criminal investigators working the more, you know, spooky side of the unexplainable side of crime in Gotham. Really underrated book, man. Um, I don't know what happened with it. I don't know why it fell by the wayside. A really, really good book. sales. You know, um, I highly recommend picking it up in trade. Uh, an excellent series. It hasn't quite wrapped yet, but it is being canceled. Hmm. But uh, I highly recommend it, man. It's just, it's just excellent, dude. It's excellent. Maybe it just wasn't selling 
enough that it could be considered a bat family book only because of the title Gotham. Right. You know? Like, no, I have to go back and mention I'm taking a step back with the Hellboy. I know I just slightly mentioned Hellboy. Hellboy wasn't initially part of my list, but it was actually something that someone presented me with. I've never read any Hellboy comics. I've what? read that. No, never read any Hellboy. Wow. I've read uh, The Corpse, that short story. Yeah. I've read that, and that was it. But I've seen the movies. I'm aware. I just wanted to give it, like, an honorable mention. Wow. But it wasn't Surprise. really you in my 13. Yeah, I've never read a Hellboy comic. Um, the only, in my opinion, really, I mean, there's other, there's a couple other titles, and when I get to them, you'll understand what I'm saying, but really the only appearance of, in my opinion, superheroes on this list is, and I kind of combined the two, is Batman Superman versus Vampires and Werewolves, which is like a, a cult classic. Okay. Um, I mean, what more do you need? It's Superman and Batman fighting vampires and werewolves. What, what else can I tell you? Because Lex Luthor had the day off and so did yeah. Darkseid. And uh, the second part of that is the Vampire Batman trilogy. Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to mention that. Which, uh, I obviously, I mean, if you're going to if you're gonna read one, just go with that Vampire Batman trilogy. Uh, it's great. Batman fights Dracula, becomes infected... And, you know, villains become infected, and then, you know, it's it's pretty much the Dark Knight. It's almost the equivalent of Blade. If Blade and Batman, you, you created a love child of the characters, you would pretty much have Batmire, Vampire Batman. So, you Batmire? Know, Batmire. All right, then. You and your amalgamation. Or, or Vampman. Vampman? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, uh, it was a good story, man. I really liked it. It's, uh... Three graphic novels. Um, I can't remember the names of them all. Red Rain, Bloodstorm. I don't remember the last one. All quality. You can actually get them all in the Vampire Batman trilogy. That's what it's called. They're probably like 20 25 bucks at your local comic book store. Really good stuff. Um, Afterlife with Archie. That's a good book. I, I really didn't think that I would be putting an Archie book on this list. But having personally read this series, it is, like, as a fan of horror and not a fan of Archie, like, this is a solid read. Yeah, I, that's another one that I do read, Afterlife, which I that's a good book. I mean, it's it's really, really great book. Army of Darkness. Yeah. Like, this is a given, man. I mean, if you want a little humor in there with your scares and your blood and your gore, uh, you can't go wrong with Ash and the Army of Darkness. Um, Are you going to watch that show? I, oh, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, Melissa actually hooked us up with stars specifically so the boy could watch Big Hero 6. I know I'm getting off subject here. And uh, I was like, good move. Because in October now I can watch Ash vs. Never Die. It's going to be great. I can't wait, man. I can't wait. That's such... I love those Evil Dead movies. The comic books have been good. I've read uh, the original one, Shop Through You Drop. Like there's a wealth of Army of Darkness comic books out there for you to pick up and read. And if you're a fan of them, I mean, it's, it's how hard is it to for any writer to understand and get on print who that character is? You know what I mean? Right. If you see those movies, a fan, that's a really really base character to understand. It's probably what makes them so great, you know? So get groovy with some Army of Darkness, baby. It's excellent. <laughs> I bet you thought I forgot. <laughs> no, I didn't. I was waiting. I've been waiting. Um, this is another given. 30 Days of Night. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, the quintessential vampire comic book story for modern times. Like, I mean, it spawned a movie. The movie wasn't quite as good as the comic book. This is the last time we've seen, uh, what's his name? The guy who starred in it. Josh, Josh Hartnett. Hartnett. Hartnett, yep. I ain't seen him since. Was, he was in, was he was Sin, in Sin City, City after that? Yeah, I don't know if it like was before a or after. Like a little second of Sin City. Yeah, he hasn't really done a lot of stuff. Um, man, great comic book, dude. Yeah, no, that comic was good. Like, taking the whole concept of, what was that, Steve Niles and Ben Templesmith? Yeah, did you read this? Did you have the sequel on the list as well? Dark Days? Yeah. I didn't put it on the list per se, but I consider that, I consider that, I'm just making up all kinds of words today. Yeah. I consider that in the umbrella that is okay. 30 Days of Night. So, I mean, there's been a, a couple other sequels, I believe, also. Right. That probably aren't as popular. But, uh, man, 
you know, uh, uh, the idea of a group, big group of vampires descending on a town in a part of the world where it's dark for, you know, Their weeks days. at a time. Yeah. That is just a, a, a fabulous concept. I can't believe no one thought of it before. Um, Steve Niles kill, killing that stuff, man. And Temple Smith's artwork, dude. Oh, my God. It matches the story perfectly. And then going back to uh, Midnight, uh, Gotham. Gotham at Midnight, Temple Smith did the, the artwork, I believe, on the first arc and just... Nailed it. Nailed it. Just nailed it. That's the, the perfect marriage of story and artwork with 30 Days. I loved it. Um, another Steve Niles creation, Criminal Macabre. Yep. Cal McDowell. Is that mysteries. how you say that? I could never Criminal figure out yeah. how to say that word. I think people want to say macabre, yeah, but it's macabre. Okay, um, you Cal know, McDonald and his little you—you uh, you gotta love Cal assistant. McDonald. Yeah, uh, his, his uh, ghoul. I can't remember his name. It's been a long time since I've been—I've read some criminal macabre, but I am a fan. I mean, you've gotta love an alcoholic ex. Uh, I, I think he's even a drug addict. Um, almost John Constantine like, if, yeah, minus the magic. Yeah. You know, uh, it's a guy that investigate, investigates paranormal, which mostly involves paranormal, you know. Um, you get everything there, man. You get demons, you get vampires, you get zombies. You get any any horror trope that you could think of, you will see in Criminal Macabre. Criminal Macabre has been running for, you know, it's a miniseries. It's a, it's a whole slew of miniseries. Just a slew, yeah, that's a bunch. Because that's been going on for years. Um, there's three omnibuses right now out from Dark Horse. Okay. So, uh, good luck finding the first one. I know I'm looking for it. But, uh, I mean, you've got all kinds of stuff, man. You've got the original I've miniseries the that original. started all. I Criminal have Macabre. All those, yeah. yeah, I have that. Um, you've got, uh, there's uh, Cell Block 666, uh, Demon Demon Baby. There's just so much, dude. It's Last Train to Deadsville. Mm-hmm. Really good, like, just great noir horror comic. Love that book. Um Bringing us to, some people might argue with this. I'm sure you won't. Swamp Thing. No. Swamp Thing, uh, specifically like the '80s Swamp Thing, like the Alan Moore, Steve Bissett, like uh, I can't remember the guy that came after them, but like that area of Swamp Thing is very horror infused. Yeah. Um, man, it's some of the best comic book writing, to, in my opinion, to this day. Uh, Alan Moore Swamp Thing. I love that stuff. Um, and you got the introduction of John Constantine. Yeah. Who obviously is a part of this list. Yeah. Um, before I move on to him with the Swamp Thing, I mean, there's so much. I would almost even consider some of the uh, most recent Swamp Thing stuff to even fall into the horror genre because of the things that Scott Snyder was doing with the book and with like Raw World. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I almost consider putting Animal Man on this list because of that too. Because of the rot. Because of the red and the tie into rot world. Um, you know, if you've never read Swamp Thing, pick up Alan Moore's stuff. It was great. I mean, even uh, the original old school Swamp Thing stuff by uh, Len Wein, isn't that how you say it? And even that stuff really hits the horror. Yeah. The horror paces for back then. Um, you gotta love Swamp Thing, man. Why that hasn't spawned a new movie, I like. <sighs> It's Not just, yet. Like blows my mind. I mean, there are rumors of Justice League Dark. Will he make an appearance in Justice League Dark? Will it be Gil- Gilmore Del Toro that makes it? Man, I would hope so because that would be fabulous. Yeah. Um, highly recommend checking out Alan Moore and Scott Snyder's Run on Swamp Thing. Really good books. Moving on to, like I said, um, another crossover. There's so many comics on this list that have crossed over into either TV or movies, and Constantine. Granted, Constantine showed it and make it to the long run. He is appearing on Arrow, I believe, possibly, I think, tonight. Hmm. I think, I believe it's episode four that he makes his first episode. Uh, if you've been paying attention to Arrow, I know I'm getting a little off subject here. But the main villain for Arrow season four is Damien Dark, and they've added right. an um, element of mystical okay. into it. So you can obviously see how John Constantine would fit into it. Um. I'm specifically going to cite the original Hellblazer run. Um, I haven't read all of it. I actually just started reading it. I've just recently in the last year become a big fan of John Constantine. I would probably say a lot of that is due to the show. 
Um, I liked the character. I liked the character even more after the show. I mean, I was already reading Constantine in Justice League Dark and the Constantine book when New 52 launched. Mm -hmm. So I was a fan of the character, but then the show helped my fandom. And then, like, you know, I had to go back and and reread, finally read Hellblazer. I'm probably only, like, 20 issues into it. But it's it's fantastic, man. And I can honestly say the same thing for the current DCU, John Constantine Hellblazer title. It really, um, I think we're only three, four, maybe five issues into that so far. Really reminds me of the original Hellblazer stuff. Even the artwork, is, it's got that weird kind of, um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's, it's not clean. The artwork's not clean, but it's very fitting to the story they're telling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, highly recommend some Constantine. That would bring us to the 13th and final comic on my list. I'm sure you know what it is. The Walking Dead. Uh, yeah. How could I do a how could I do a thirteen horror comics for Halloween and not throw The Walking Dead on there? Like this is the mother of all zombie comic books. Um we're still going at over a hundred issues strong. Um and it's been a, a hell of a ride, you know. And it's it's uh one of those stories that not only shows you the the horror and frighteningness of of the shambling dead but also that sometimes the obvious horror isn't really as scary as the horror inside of all of us i liked it and uh the show has <laughs> yeah the sh- the and sh- let you guys know i was still here yeah i know right <laughs> <laughs> the show has been uh phenomenal i mean obviously it spawned a a second Spin-off, show right it's just possibly talk of a third which i think is overkill but i mean mm-hmm. if it works for him it works for him um you know it, it is the ultimate zombie story um i give uh kirkman a lot of credit I, I do find the man to be slightly egotistical for my tastes but um i appreciate the fact that the man liked zombie movies and he said i want to know what goes on afterwards and uh, it, it kind of upsets me that the godfather of zombies, George Romero, doesn't like Walking Dead. Doesn't? He doesn't. Hmm. He thinks it's stupid. Which, to me, I feel like you're just angry that someone took what you created and had more success with it. I can you're see You're bitter. Because what has George Romero done that has added to his creation that didn't suck? Like, did you see... Uh, no. No. I don't even remember what it was called now, the last no. dead movie he made. It's, I, it's That's how bad it sucked. I don't even remember the name. Like, Night of the Living Dead, classic. Dawn of the Dead, classic. Day of the Dead, classic. Land of the Dead, that's what it was called. Ugh. You know, it just wasn't good. So for you to bash someone that, like, I just don't understand the bashing, but I, I love the premise of what Kirkham was going with. You know, you get the end and you want to know, well, what happens now? What happens now? Like, how do you... And it's just been... Like, uh, I... <laughs> I've got a... Slightly... I'm slightly displeased with his writing style currently. Because for the past year, I feel like he's... Really got into decompressed... Like, uh... Is it decompressed or compressed storytelling? Where it's, he's just taking too long. And he's not... They're not... He's not giving you anything. It's like, he gives you little, little bits. And it's really short. And you feel like... When you read an issue of The Walking Dead currently, it feels like it took you like a minute. Right. But, uh, I mean, that can't detract from the fact that when you put that minute of reading together with the In a trade 100 bag. before, it's 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 fantastic. You right. Know? Um, Where's some books that you didn't mention? I'm kind of surprised. Well, Sorry. you know, hey, go ahead. This is where I um, was going to do some honorable mentions. Yeah, honorable mentions. Honorable yeah. mentions, Tomb of Dracula. Yeah, I was going to say the Marvel horror stuff. Yeah, you've got a, you know, Tomb Werewolf Dracula, by Night. Dracula, Werewolf by Night, Man-Thing, Morbius, mm-hmm. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. You know, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't go that route. Um, classic X-Men versus Dracula. Classic X-Men versus Dracula. Yeah, I really wanted to bring up Tomb of Dracula and Blade as an honorable mention. Um, why they are based in the genre, I don't feel like they're specific to it. Which is kind of why I didn't wrench in Werewolf by Night or Ghost Rider. One of the books that I can't stand, but I don't know if I would put it under the horror genre. Sorry, people, I'm tired. <laughs> Long night. Sorry. Uh, one of the books that I, I, I can't stand, but I'm not sure if it would fall under the horror genre. Have you ever read from Avatar, 
crossed Badlands or just crossed in general? I have, yeah, because uh, you remember, you remember you, we, were, we were used to record at the comic book store, and I came in that one night, and there two girls came in, and they were looking for Batman books, and just being the, you know, the goofy ass that I am sometimes, I was like, well, if you're into dolphin rape, check out Crossed. <laughs> So, it's, uh, no, I, seriously. I don't remember this. No, you don't? No. I, like, I had read a couple issues of Cross, and this... It's twisted. This guy in this character, in this issue of Cross, had gotten hold of a dolphin, was having sex with its blowhole. It was really weird. So, I'm like, is it horror, or is it just strange? Just messed up stuff. It's just strange. <laughs> um, um, another book, uh, Big Dog Inc.'s Ursa Minor. That was a really good one. You know what? I started I started reading Ursa Minor and never finished it. That was good. I, I believe like I have it all somewhere, but I never read it all. Yeah, it was good. Um, um Yeah, there, there's there's way more. You know, there's there's yeah, there's so much that's just I, I went for like the, the what meat. I felt like was the meat. I mean, going back to superheroes, you could do Batman versus Predator. <laughs> you know, you could Superman versus aliens, no? I wouldn't count that under horror. Or hell, aliens and... Uh, that's more sci-fi, though, really, isn't yeah. it? Aliens and, and Predator. Yeah. Um, there's no sci-fi holiday. So Marvel no. Zombies. Marvel Zombies. Yes, Marvel Zombies definitely deserves an honorable mention. Um, I think what cut Marvel Zombies off the list for me, though, was that they ran that into the ground so bad that I feel like it just I, started I to like be like crap. Like, the original Marvel Zombies, the concept was great, the execution was great, the story was good. And after that, it just kind of fell flat, you know? It was kind of like overkill. Yeah. But, uh... That, uh that's, you got any other, other honorable mentions you'd like to put in there? I have. I, I can't remember the actual titles, so I'm just not... Oh! Uh, image book that, for some reason, was never finished, and it pisses me off that it wasn't finished because it was such a good book. It was a horror sequel to The Wizard of Oz. It was called No Place Like Home. Oh, wow. That was such a crazy book, man. And it didn't get finished? No. And that sucks. Oh, man, I was I was so frustrated with it. That's massively disappointing. But it's such it. a good book. Or, you know, the few issues that, that were out. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, the, like, <laughs> if, if we were getting into, like, the Marvel-heavy horror kind of books, I would have mentioned... Uh, what was that? Not Man Wolf, but Wolf Man. <laughs> Kirkman's Wolf Man. Cap Wolf. Which I, yeah, Cap, Cap Wolf. <laughs> I mean, hell, if you wanted to get into that, you know, that Secret War Spider Island where everybody's spiders is kind of horror. I mean, it's obviously present in the, in the genre of comic books. Or in comic books as a genre here and there, but those I felt like was the must read. And this has been our spooktacular... <laughs> Issue six six. Throw another six, cause we're evil, baby. What about the goon? The goon. The goon was a cross between horror and comedy. He was. It was more. I, I would put the goon in the category more... with like uh, Evil Dead, yeah. Army of Darkness kind of. Yeah. Stuff. See, I read like some goon, but I wasn't like sold on it. You know. Right. Right. So when I came up with so when I told you when the I... grim fairy tale Zenoscope book. Yeah, see, I haven't read any of those. Those are crazy good. When uh, I mean, there's so well, much out were, there. They that... started off a lot more horror. They were they reminded me of Tales from the Crypt kind of thing, an anthology yeah. thing. But as it started to gain popularity. It's like it became its own. Like, imagine the Crypt Keeper. You know, obviously he's the host. He's telling these stories. But it's getting so popular that the Crypt Keeper himself is now the story. Right. And not what they're actually showing, you know. So that's that's what Grim Fairy Tales reminded me of. Yeah, like I said, when I was putting it together and you were like, uh, I've read some stuff. And I was like, well, I'm just going to It's like it's all hitting me as we're talking about it. 13, you know. I felt like 13 was a good number for Halloween. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously, that's why we had the honorable mentions, you know. But uh, there's so much out there. This was really just the tip of the iceberg, and some of the best, though. Um, you can go find it all, wherever you can do it, digitally, at the store. Go to your booksellers, check it out. Get your little comic reading done for Halloween. Uh, for everything Comics Remixed, comicsremix.com, Facebook, Check us out at uh, Instagram, Shy Town Cylon, um, Twitter at Comics Remixed, at the Spinner Rack. Um, if you need to want to contact us, want to come on the show, something you want to talk about, 
If you're a creator and you want to come and uh, talk to us about your independent creation and give a little promotion, we're all about that. Email us at Brian at Comics Remix, Junior at Comics Remixed. Alex at Comics Remixed, our toy guy. Check out his reviews remixed. Um, remixed reviews. Remixed reviews. To <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's pretty much all I got. Stay safe out there and then, uh, enjoy your Halloween, peeps. Check that candy before you eat it, man. People are crazy. Oh, and we'll see you back here. Um, I think we're going into a bye week. I believe so. So we, if we have a show, yay. I'm just saying it right now. We might gonna, not be here. We're both going to be on the toilet because all that candy. We'll be on the Halloween laxative. Um, we might down the season. We might, uh, yeah, the season's winding down. You know, it's uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, family obligations and stuff. Birthdays, not to mention the holidays. So. Uh, Probably going to call it being a bye week. Uh, we might be here next week. Depends. That's still in the works. That's still in the, the the air. So if anything, we might be on a two bye weeks after this episode. Maybe not. I might sit down with the book here and come talk about uh, keep us, some stuff. Uh, keep track with whether we're doing it or not on our Facebook page. Absolutely. Very social. Facebook, uh, Twitter, we will obviously keep you all posted if there is a new episode. And if you have subscribed to our YouTube page, obviously you'll get the new notification if we upload an episode uh that's it folks that's all folks happy halloween peeps Woo. Woo.